Hi, I'm Damien Wills and welcome to Go Fly Online and today's special guest is Grade 1 Instructor, 737 Pilot and all round nice guy, Paul Reddish. Um, today we're going to be looking at the uh, age old argument, do you control airspeed with power or pitch on final approach? So Paul, I thought uh, a good way to actually put this to bed finally is this for, for us to fly in the light uh, light training aircraft, which will be the sling aircraft today, which we use for um, ab initio training uh, and navigation training. It weighs around 600 kilos. And then uh, to prove um, uh, which one is better, then we'll do a flight in a 737 simulator. Sounds uh, like a lot of fun. Okay, excellent. So um, what, uh, we won't talk about your thoughts yet. We're just going to go and fly it and um, let the uh, real world uh, prove which one is correct. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so it's very busy in Calandra today, so we'll look at a uh, pretty similar scenario that happens with students, especially when they're out on their own. So we're flying, we're on base, and our airspeed's starting to get low because we're looking everywhere for traffic. So we should be at 70 knots, we're at 65. And I'm looking to turn finals, and it's all clear, so I'm turning finals, but I'm at the same time looking for traffic. I'm now back at 60 knots. Everything feels normal, but I'm getting really slow. So, as soon as I realise that I'm slow, I've got to control the airspeed with attitude. So the best way to do that is lower the nose. We start going down the hill, the airspeed increases back to 70 knots. If we push too far, because we're still looking, the airspeed goes a lot higher. We start to go below our approach profile. Now we have to raise the nose and bring the speed back to 70 knots. As we do that, we have to control our rate of descent with just little bits of power. Don't over control it, just try and keep it nice and stable. Again, if we get too slow, we're going to get off profile. And the only way to correct that in the correct sense in this light aircraft is to lower the nose, get back to 70 knots. A little bit high now, so the power is coming back. That's going to control our rate of descent. I'm just controlling the pitch attitude to maintain the 70 knots. Everything's aircraft's flying nicely. We're starting to come back on profile, a little bit slow, so lowering the nose, I've got to increase power. I've just come into that headwind. Holding 70 knots. Controlling the rate of descent with power. Yep, you went back on profile. Everything's stable. Watch that. that traffic that takes in. Zero nine, zero okay. three, traffic on short yeah. final, yeah. so we'll go around. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it coming down. And for the go round, we're going to apply full power. We're going to keep the nose level. Don't let it come up. We're going to fly straight and level. As the airspeed starts to accelerate, we're going to raise the flap in stages. We're going to give a call. Still maintaining straight and level. Coming off to the right slightly to look down the runway. Land traffic swing 7788 is going around runway 05. The thing we've got to watch is it wants to pitch up so we don't want to go into a stall. Make sure it's nicely trimmed because it was trimmed for the approach. We've got full power, we're just back to a right normal climb. I've got Remy Lima Sierra is mid Okay, this time we're coming in and we're um, going to try and fly the jet aircraft as we would the uh, sling that we did earlier on. So that will involve using uh, attitude to control airspeed and power to control rate of descent. I can't guarantee it'll be uh, a nice ride for the passengers down the back, so we'll just see how we go. We're just coming back on a profile and speed. Okay, so we're level at 1,500 feet. We're about uh, 10 miles from Brisbane. It's a visual approach into Brisbane. And we're trying to control the profile. So the speed's quite high compared to what we wanted to bug. So the first thing in a sling, what would we do? We'd start to raise the attitude. So I raise the attitude in the aircraft, just a little bit. There's another, I've added another five degrees of pitch attitude. The airspeed is coming back, but we're already climbing at a thousand feet a minute with all that thrust. Due to the inertia of the aircraft, as the speed comes back onto target, I've got 60 tons going up at a thousand feet per minute. I'll bring the thrust back to try and continue the descent. We start to level the nose and we start to bring it back down. We're on target, oh, due to the inertia, now we're a thousand feet a minute down. And we're gaining airspeed, so I raise the nose again. Airspeed's coming back to where I want it. 
quite a lot of movement. I'm trying to control that rate of descent. Power's got to come back because we're just flying level now. I'm not really achieving what I want to achieve. So I'm trying to lower the attitude again to control the airspeed back on target speed. And as that's settling down, I'm back to 1500 feet a minute rate of descent. So as you can see, we're, we're actually starting to porpoise up and down. It's getting worse. We're uh, it's a thousand feet above the ground. I'm trying to a thousand feet a minute rate of descent. Not a nice picture. Bring the nose back up. I'm actually working quite hard to fly the jet aircraft as I would a light sport aircraft on the approach. We're actually now coming in the back of the drag curve, high nose attitude. As I do that, the airspeed's increasing, so I'm raising the attitude again. Now, now we're at 15 degrees nose up. We're climbing at nearly 2,000 feet a minute. Bring the thrust back again to try and get back on profile. Attitude's coming down. I'm trying to fly that attitude. There's the runway, I'm trying to keep it at a third using power. Rate of descent out of control. Well, well. Need to 2,000 feet a minute. Power's coming up to try and arrest that rate of descent. As I do that, the airspeed's coming up. I need to raise the nose to reduce the airspeed back to target. As I do that, I've got to reduce the thrust. As I, nothing's happening now. We're still climbing because I'm raising the nose because of the inertia. Thrust is all the way off. Coming back on speed, still maintaining level at 600 feet. There's a runway down there somewhere. We're very high now. Trying to control the thrust. Sink rate. There we go, there's a warning. See how easy it is to get in a really bad position when you don't fly it properly. 300 feet. Airspeed's way up. I can't change the attitude much to bring it back. I've got the thrust just about all the way back, and the runway is disappearing under the nose. And. Uh, Approaching minimums. Here we go, minimums. We're halfway down the runway normally. This would be, we're going around. And I'll show you why in a second. We've got the thrust off. Everything's coming back on the ground. We're traveling at 130 knots, coming up to the end of the runway. It's 80 knots. 60 knots. Oh, we made it. Wow. That's that was hard work. I'll be filling out paperwork for the rest of my life. <laughs> but uh, it, I was working really hard trying to get it to, uh, trying to control the uh, attitude or the, the rate of descent with power and the um, using the attitude to control the airspeed. It was just way too much inertia. And you can see we're up thousand feet a minute, sometimes two thousand feet a minute, then we're down, then we're up, and we just, the the, uh, the sine wave basically got larger and larger and larger as we came in to try and land, so totally different aeroplane, totally different thoughts of how you fly it, bring it on the project. Okay, so this time we're going to uh, extend downwind and have a much longer finals. And we'll have a go at um, Flying it like an air, airline aircraft and getting it onto the ground. So we'll have our work cut out for us this time. Okay, so this time we're using power to control uh, airspeed and attitude to control the approach path or the rate of descent. And we've come in a little bit low this time. We're on speed and 70 knots. And this time I'm just uh, reducing the airspeed. It's coming back. It's getting slow, so I've got to increase power to try and increase it. As we do, our rate of descent's come to a stop, basically, as we start to accelerate. I'm going to have to push forward. There's my profile. Very slow to accelerate. Now that power that we've left on, it's getting us too fast, so now I've got to bring the power back again. Large changes in power. I'm trying to hold that profile. Getting a little bit high, so we're going to lower the nose. As I lower the nose, the speed's coming up. I've got the power all the way off. So it's not working. I'm, I'm holding the profile now. I'm on the correct approach path, but I'm at 75 knots. Power's all the way off. As we get back, it's coming back to 70 knots slowly. Now it's 65. I'm on the profile. Now I've got to increase power again as I increase power. Very slow. So, I don't know if you can see the throttle from the cameras, but 
it's probably called being a throttle jockey. Yep. I'm on the power, I'm off the power, trying to control that airspeed while I'm holding the rate of descent with the attitude, and it's actually quite a hefty workload to try and keep it where I want it Third using that technique. One mile final, zero five for a go round, not below 200 feet, Calandra. And here we go, power's coming off. Calandra traffic, 2132, turning base, runway zero five for a full stop, Calandra traffic. Get the power up a bit to get clear of the runway. Thanks. That was great, Paul. So, um, yeah, pretty obvious. The, um, that was very sloppy. Um, using power to control the airspeed in, this, in the sling. Imagine trying to teach a student that. Well, one of the other points was it had my brain working overtime trying yes. to control it. So I'm using all that brain space that I should have had to be able to fly the approach. Yes. I'm trying to, I'm power on power off. I'm doing far too much. And that's that's affecting your profile then at the same time. Yep. Um, just very messy. Uh, the trick to being uh, having a good approach and a good landing is a stabilised approach. Yep. So it just doesn't work in um, using um, power to control airspeed in a light aircraft. Yep, excellent. Okay, so if we uh, on the airspeed indicator on the uh, left hand side of the screen here, we have a little trend line. So if I bring the power back. See the green line, green arrow is coming back. That's starting to show that we're coming, becoming slow. We're below our approach speed. And the correction for that is to apply thrust. There's quite a delay. Thrust is coming up as selected. The arrow, trend arrow is now coming up. We're coming back towards our normal speed. At the same time, holding the same attitude on our final approach. Very little trim is needed. Still a little bit slow, so I'll just increase the thrust a little bit more. Still holding the same attitude, coming down. A little bit more thrust. We're now on speed, but the little green arrow is saying that we're accelerating. The trend arrow, so I can just bring that back a touch until the green arrow disappears. All I have to do now is fly that approach into Brisbane, keeping the descent rate going. Airspeed's increasing, so I've got to bring the thrust back. Watching that trend arrow. It's 1,000 feet. Still a little bit fast, just touching the throttle a little bit. Very minimal movement, just flying the aeroplane using the uh, elevators. Just a little bit fast, a little touch more thrust coming back. Nice and steady approach. That thrust vector is increasing, so I come back with a little bit more thrust. That could be due to wind or anything else as we start to come down lower. Right, coming in towards the runway, on speed, on profile, steady approach. A little bit more thrust as it slows down. Very gentle movements. This is where people start to over control. One hundred. Approaching minimums. Coming into land. 30. Thrust 30. is coming off. 20. Flying along the runway. That's on the ground. Let's reverse thrust. And coming to a stop. And that's the correct approach in a uh, heavy aircraft weighing roughly 60 tonnes. Well, I don't know about you, Paul, but that was a lot of fun. Yes, yes. <laughs> quite warm today, so yes, it's been uh, it was quite bit, an adventure. A bit hotter in the uh, sling than the 737 air-conditioned simulator, but <laughs> uh, let's talk about the uh, sling first of all. Okay, so we noticed with the uh, low weight, the low inertia in the sling, that it was much more effective to use the uh, attitude to control the airspeed than it was the power. Uh, the power giving us quite large pitch moments and then uh, us having to chase the attitude and the power, which led to an unstable approach. What we've shown with both today, uh, there are various factors. It's different for every aircraft, so you need to know your aircraft. You need to fly it the way the flight manual specifies that it needs to be flown. You also have to consider uh, the aircraft weight, so it'll handle differently light than it will heavy. 
the uh, conditions of the field, the surface winds, crosswinds affected, downwinds affected, and the strength of the, t uh, strength of the headwind. Look at the 737 sim going into that. Yes. Uh, how, you know, obviously, what did you find? You're trying to fly it like a sling. Okay, well that uh, didn't quite work as well because we're adjusting attitude to try and control the airspeed. We're adjusting uh, up to 60, around 65 tonne of aircraft. The inertia, it was hard to catch, it was hard to hold on to. And we had uh, quite large, as we demonstrated, pitch moments. Uh, quite large changes in uh, vertical speed and altitude and uh, didn't really correct the airspeed the way we thought it would. Yes, it was um, very interesting to watch that. It'd be pretty terrifying for passengers if you tried to control airspeed with pitch in a 737. Especially down the back row as yes. they're being lifted off their seats. <laughs> um, so obviously well, this pretty much proves that for a light you know, low inertia aircraft, obviously pitch is better for airspeed control, uh, particularly on final approach. And for large, fast, high inertia, heavy aircraft, power to control the airspeed. That's correct. Now obviously there's not there's probably some magic number of what weight or speed we get to. Uh, obviously the heavier we get with aircraft, it makes more sense to use power. Yes. Um, more high performance aircraft, it, it changes again. So if you're going for the Air Force, you end up in fast jets. Yes. You know, same sort of deal. So you've just got to know your aircraft and know what it is. But in general, the uh, light aircraft, it's attitude controlled airspeed and power controlled your rate of descent. Yep. So I hope we've uh, put, finally put this argument to bed. Thanks for uh, joining us today on GoFly Online. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time.